full neck dress. It's like a cowl neck slip dress here. So this is what we are sewing this morning. Um, we're going to be getting sewing here pretty soon. Sorry about the shake on that. Time for me to get a new one, I think. Good morning, good morning. This is what we are sewing today. It is sewing Saturdays. Good morning. Good morning. You can find this pattern and all of the information for class every week in my link in bio under sewing Saturdays. And this is what we're gonna get started with. We are talking about cowl neckline construction today. We are gonna be talking about a cowl neckline dress today. This is what we are talking about. Good morning, everybody. I am going to get started. I've got a few short lectures to do. The reason that I have been posting about spaghetti straps for the last few days. Good morning. The reason I've been posting for about spaghetti straps for the last few days is because we're going to do them today. And I also have a couple other things to talk to you guys about, including a lesson on cutting on the bias. For anybody who is not familiar or doesn't know why we cut on the bias, that's what we're going to cover today. Good morning. Morning, Jean. How are you doing today? All right, guys. Just check how much bobbin thread I have. Who knows if we'll make it? Let's set up here and we'll start talking about our pattern pieces. <coughs> Good morning, everybody. So this week I posted a few videos on spaghetti straps. I am I'm doing okay. My kids were sick all week, so it's been a crazy week for me. How's everybody else doing? Everybody else hanging in there? Good morning, we are making a cowl neck dress today. This is what we are making. This is what we are covering today. <clears throat> so I'm going to be talking today about cutting on the bias and why we cut on the bias. And also we're going to be talking about um, spaghetti straps and um, all of the good stuff that we normally talk about under stitching and all of those things. So first I want to talk about oh, my spaghetti straps fell down. First I want to talk about the bias. Okay, so the bias is the 45 degree angle of fabric. So the reason, let's start with how we find the bias. So if you have a piece of fabric, right, and your straight grain is here, straight up and down, these faces are actually straight up and down on the fabric. When you rotate them, they are pointing at the 45 degrees, right? Another way to find that is to, on your fabric, if you measure up six inches and over six inches and you mark your starting point and you mark your ending point, that's gonna be the 45 degree angle of the bias. So the reason that we cut on the bias <clears throat> is when you want your fabric to have a nice drape to it. So for this specific pattern, we want it to have a really nice drape, okay? If it were straight grain, it doesn't drape so nice. Everybody see that? So this is the straight grain, okay? And this is the bias. So it just lays so much nicer. How is it going? Where did I get this fabric? I got this fabric from Joanne Fabrics. Joanne Fabrics. And I fell in love with it. And I am so excited. I am so excited about this dress. You guys, I am so excited. 
Okay, so another thing that I need to talk about, so the pattern currently, which I think I'm going to alter, I, re I love it, I love this fabric. I'm going to probably move that. Um, I'm so sorry about the shakiness today. I don't know what's going on with my, my uh, thing there. Okay, so another thing I wanna talk about here is the pattern currently, if you purchase the pattern before class, the pattern currently has a very deep drape, which some people like, some people do not. And we're gonna talk about how to adjust that should you want to adjust it. Um, I think I'm gonna adjust the pattern a little bit and then resend it out um, because depending on your bust size, now if you have a wider bust, this might fill out a little bit, but depending on your bust size, this is kind of extreme for me. So the way that you adjust this, let me show you here. So say it's sewn at the side seam. We're going to adjust a cowl neck and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So the way that you do this, because it's on the bias, you can pull over wherever you want it to go. Like that, Probably a little bit more appropriate for our PG-13 crowd here. Okay, so if this is where you want it to go. All you need to do is pick your point where your spaghetti straps are gonna go and then just reshape, reshape your armhole here. Now this is obviously an extra small mannequin and the pattern piece that I cut out is much larger than that. So this is a little bit of an exaggerated example here. But all you need to do to adjust this, which I am gonna adjust the pattern, but all you need to do to adjust this is to scoot over to where you really want it to drape to. Now this is the facing piece here. This is the inside. Let's see if you guys can see that. This is the inside of the garment. Okay. That's probably about what I want it to look like. But I'm also um, have this, this is a bigger piece that's cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Try it on myself and give myself an idea of where I want this drape to land. It's always a good idea to test out the pieces before you um, decide to sew them. So say that I want this amount of drape, okay? All I have done is scooted over that point. This is the original pattern. Okay. And that's a little bit too busty for me. So I'm going to adjust it, I think, to about here. <coughs> and then we're going to talk about What you do on the pattern. So pattern and sewing is all about problem solving. Somebody com commented the other day about how um, they're afraid that when they, you know, they go and they make it, it's going to turn out like it's not going to turn out the way you want it. A lot of the times when we sew, it doesn't turn out exactly like how we want it. Sometimes it does, which is fantastic. But you have to problem solve in between. So here is my adjustment. From here to here is my adjustment. And all I'm gonna do is reconfigure this curve, which is this curve anyways here. You can see on my body here, that's about right. Okay, and so then we've got our drape decided and we've got our curve, okay? 
Does anybody have any questions? Anybody have any questions before we get started sewing? I am so excited about this one. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to take pictures. <clears throat> this is one that I am super, super excited about. So, again, I'm just adjusting. And I'm going to adjust this. All right, so now I adjusted the facing. I'm gonna adjust the front, and then I'm gonna start sewing. The sewing instructions call for, and um, we're gonna sew first the front to the back at the side seams. And I'm gonna show you, give you guys a sneak peek of the pattern instructions so you guys can see them. So first we're going to get started with this right here. We're going to sew the front to the back. And if you have, I'm so sorry about this shaking. It is driving me crazy. So if you have, um, if you have an adjustment and you are following along today or you're going to follow along, I'm going to start posting, um, I'm going to post the classes, but I'm also going to post, um, I think, tutorials of these so that they're nice and short and sweet, um, which is also going to be on the Sewing Saturdays page. So if you want to watch today and then you want to follow along with the tutorial so that you can do it in your own time, that is okay too. So I am going to post that and, um, and I'm going to post an updated version of the pattern because... I think this is, now a lot of people, you know, some people really like the deep, deep V. It's just a little too much, a little too much for me. That's just my personal, personal preference. <clears throat> so, the cowl neckline, as we briefly talked about, first thing, is cut on the bias, and the bias is a 45 degree angle to the straight grain. So your straight grain is if you were to look at your fabric and it's folded in half and um, the salvage edge, so the edge that's finished on the edge of the fabric, that is um, running straight up and down, straight up and down. So straight grain is gonna be the straight up and down that goes with the salvage edge. A bias, is gonna be on a 45 degree angle. And you might be thinking like, I'm not good with angles, I'm not good with geometry. The quickest way to find that is to put a pin and measure over six inches and up six inches and put a pin. And that is gonna be your 45 degree bias line. So same over, same up is gonna be your, um, your bias. Okay guys. Are you guys ready? We are sewing. Right here, we're gonna sew the side seams, the front to the back, and I'm gonna lay that out and we're gonna look at it. We're gonna sew just the side seams, front and back. Hey guys, got Diane. She is a new sewer. That is totally, totally okay. We get a lot of new sewers on here. We love them very much. So, right now I am laying out my side seams. All right, I have my back pieces, okay? And I'm going to lay them out, and pin them down. And this one's gonna be a quick sew, guys which is why I am so excited. And we are also gonna be talking about our spaghetti straps, how to make them, how to turn them inside out. There's a couple different techniques you can use depending on your comfort level and your preference and the size of the strap.
Okay, so I am just pinning my side seams here. You can see that. That camera is shaking so bad today. My camera stand, I need to get a new one. For this fab, for this um, pattern, I suggest a, um, I have like a silky, silky fabric here. This is what I'm working with today. Um, it's gonna look really, really nice with a silky fabric because it's cut on the bias. Um, but you can use any woven fabric and you could probably um, even get away with a jersey on this pattern. So I have, it's like a, the, I guess what Joann's calls a silky solid. It's like a silky thin fabric. You could really use anything. You could use a crepe, you can use a um, you could use a cotton if you wanted to. Well, I would go for something that's um, soft. Just make sure that it's like really, really soft and not like a, like a heavier, heavier cotton. I'm just pinning my side seams here. side seams and if you guys have um, if you have a serger you can serge these but if you do not you can do a zigzag edge um, you can do pinking shears down the sides you can do an overlock stitch on your machine got a couple options if you check your manual um, a lot of the new machines have an overlock stitch right on the sewing machine think that you'll be surprised okay so I'm gonna sew my side seams right again we are doing right here the side seams I'm just sewing both side seams here right and then I'm going to um, the next step will be the facing and we've talked about facings a few times Facings are what finish like neck holes and armholes. And they're really important because they give the garment some structure and they help finish the outside of the garment. Just sewing down the side seams for anybody who is just watching. I am going to start posting the, um, some tutorials on these so that you guys can do short and sweet tutorials. I've watched a couple of the playbacks for the classes. Sometimes I think they're a little bit too long. So. I think I'm going to post the class playbacks as well as um, shortened versions of the tutorials that I'll post with the patterns so that if you go to purchase the pattern you can find a tutorial for the pattern to get you through the pattern and 
So I've got one side seam here, my front and my side. Okay. And I'm going to sew my second side seam. We've got most of a dress. This one is going to be such a quick sew. Does anybody have any questions while I'm going through this here? I know it can be boring to watch me sew on my machine. machine do I recommend for beginners? So this is the machine that I talk about a lot. It's a Brother XM2701 and it is linked, if you can't find it, um, linked in my um, link in bio under products I recommend. There's a little page there with all the items that I talk about and <clears throat> that's just so you can find it really easy. So this machine as long as like a basic as well as the basic like Singer machine, um, Brother Singer are super easy to use. They're super easy to get along with if you're a beginner. Um, other people like to spend a little bit more on a machine and really learn how to use it. But honestly, if you're just getting into sewing, any light duty to medium duty machine is gonna be Perfect. Because really, all you really need to do is sew. Missed the start. So the beginning steps to the dress, we have literally just started. We are sewing step number one here. This is the side seams. The one thing I did talk about in the beginning of the class is the pattern has a little bit of drape, um, had a deep V drape to it, and I adjusted mine to be not so much of a drape. And the way that I did that is I measured in, and then I readjusted the armhole, which I'm going to do on the actual pattern, and then just send out an updated version to anybody who already bought it because I don't know if anybody actually wants a super deep V. I think sometimes people like it, but personally, it's too much. So I now have a front and a side seam. Okay, so the next step, the next step on the instructions, step number two, is the facing, we're gonna sew the side seams, the front to the back on the facing. And those pieces look exactly like the front because they are going to finish off the front of the pattern and they're gonna finish off the, um, the neckline and the armholes. Now if I can find I laid all my stuff out. Okay, just one second here. I've lost my facings. Oh, <laughs> they're pinned to my mannequin. I am losing my mind. Good morning, it is Saturday and we are sewing. I'm sewing. Like a crazy person. Okay, so we are laying out our facing. Front facing is facing up. Here, front facing is facing up. And we are just gonna line up our side seams. Line up the side seams here. And I'm gonna pin them and stitch down the side seam.
just sewing the side seams. And then we're gonna go back and look at the instructions again. So make sure that you always go back to the instructions. So we're gonna sew the side seams of the facings together. So front to back, right sides together, the front facing to the back facing. Then I think we're gonna do some spaghetti straps. Okay. I'm back stitching at the beginning and end of every seam. Back stitching is when you hold down your reverse button. <coughs> do three stitches forward. Hold the reverse for three stitches back. And then you continue sewing. And now I have my facing piece. So when you sew the facing to the right side of the garment, it's going to finish off the neckline and it's gonna finish off the armholes. All right? So we're gonna lay that to the side. We're gonna go back to our instructions. And it's time for some spaghetti straps. So right here, we're sewing the spaghetti straps, okay? So it's basically a long tube that you turn right side out. So the piece that I have, which is probably way too long, but um, the piece that I have, I cut them for, or I put them for 25 inches long. Um, in case you want to do the cross straps in the back on this dress. So what you're finished item is going to look like is this right here, right? It's completely encased. I've pressed it. Just this little cute little spaghetti strap. Okay, so the way that you're going to do that is you're going to take your piece and you're going to fold it in half long ways, okay? And you're going to stitch across the short end first, okay? The short end first and then you're gonna go down the long side. So we're gonna go across the short side and then down the long side. Now keep your seam allowance at a half inch. And then when you go down the long side, you should be stitching, if you're keeping it at half of an inch, your other side should line up right with the 3 8 line. Now you've got markings on both sides of that plate, okay, to watch. So one, sh one side should be running down the half inch line and the other side should be running down the three eighths line. And if you look really, really closely, you can read them. That way you make sure that you're, you're nice and straight. What you're sewing is nice and straight and what you've cut is nice and straight. don't want to get much skinnier so you can do skinnier than 3 8 straps but they're really hard to turn the turning tools are going to be really important for this step the longer the strap is too it's going to be hard to turn so I'm just sewing down the long end of the tube and I'm going to leave the open side at the bottom <coughs> Again, I'm running down to the right of the presser foot. I'm running down the half inch line. And to the left of the presser foot, I'm going down the 3 8 line. Those grooves in your presser plate are actually measurements that you should follow. I do sell my patterns. The patterns are if you go to my link in bio on any of my social media pages or JacquelineTerry.com, um, I do have the class link is going to be Sewing Saturdays, and then there's also a shop link, or if you just go to JacquelineTerry.com, go to shop, there is, um, the patterns are there, 
And this pattern will be updated very shortly here. I'm going to put a couple extra lines on it and I'm going to adjust some of the drape in the front, I think, because the drape on the front of this one is a little bit too deep for me. Um, some of you might say, hey, I like a really low cut V and that's great, but for me personally, I don't need it that low cut. I've passed to that stage. So I have trimmed my spaghetti strap. Now it's inside out, okay? And I actually, where did I put them? I got the, this new set of tube turners this week. This is on Amazon. It's also under the link in my bio under products I recommend. All of the items that I talk about are there just for you guys so you guys can find them. These here are basically straws and rods or dowel rods. <clears throat> and I'm going to show you how easy it's going to be to turn this tube right side out. So the way that you do this is you take your straw. This is a straw. It's a really tiny straw. And you're going to go all the way down. All the way down to the closed end. Just keep pushing until you hit the closed end. Okay. So now I have reached the closed end of this. And then you're just going to push the fabric to the right side using your rod. Now, the skinnier the tube, the harder it is to turn it, right? But the thicker the tube, the easier it's going to be to turn it. Now, when you're in the end here, you can, if, if the end is going to be something that's, um, if you're doing like a tie or something that that end is going to be um, exposed, if you're doing like ties or you're tying it around the back like a halter neck or whatever, you can turn it, turn that end while you're in there, right? So we're just going to pull it right side out. We're going to get our rod back out. And you have a perfect spaghetti strap. So this spaghetti strap here, you would press it, roll it a little bit so you can find that seam edge and press it should be three eighths of an inch all the way across. And you've got a perfect spaghetti strap. And you can use this for ties. You can use it for lacing. You can use it for pretty much anything you can think of. Um, so I'm going to do my other one real quick and then we're going to attach them to the dress. Does anybody have any questions on the spaghetti straps? I know it's pretty quick, pretty quick. Spaghetti straps, never so easy. If you do not have a tube turner set and you're not really so, let me show you real quick. So these ones have like real thick um, tubes too. So depending on what size, this is probably a 5 eighths and this is probably 3 quarters of an inch. Depending on which size um, strap you're going for, these are really easy to use. Now, if you, um, I don't know why that's so loud, I'm sorry. So, depending on, oh God, it's so distracting. Okay. So, we're sewing our spaghetti straps three eighths of an inch wide. Now, if you want a thicker strap, just account for that here. I'm too far because I'm distracted. So with the tube turner, it's super easy. If you have, you have to have one closed end. Okay. One of those ends has to be closed for the tube turners to work. Now, if you are not using one closed end, they sell a tube turner that has a like crochet hook and you would fish it through the tube and come back with the crochet hook and then pull it through or you can use the um, safety pin method for a 3 8 inch strap though I would do 
Hi, Barb. How's it going? I use a safety pin. It takes me forever. I am there with you. So the safety pin, you basically pin one end to the, um, you pin one end of the strap and then you fish the safety pin all the way through. And when you're turning it, it sometimes it takes forever and you can pop your stitches if you're using a stretchy fabric. Um, I like to use the safety pin if it's like something really big. <clears throat> it's a really wide one. But if you, I don't know if you guys saw my um, video this week, I did a hack for the tube turners. If you guys don't have one, if you use a straw, regular straw and a skewer, you can get the same exact, um, the same exact uh, situation turning it. You just push the straw all the way in and then you use the skewer to fish it back through. The only thing is with the tube turners that I just showed you that I'm using today, it's got that really, really tiny one. It's almost, almost like a coffee straw. So if you needed a good hack to do a skinny one, you could probably do a coffee straw, one of the little skinny ones, and then a skewer that fits through it or a little metal rod um, of some kind if you needed a tube turner hack without buying them because we don't always have the money to purchase all of the extra stuff. But I did go ahead and get these this week for you guys to show you what they look like and how to use them so that you guys can decide for yourselves if you want it or you need it. Of course you want it, but can't always buy everything we want. So again, strap is inside out, okay? I'm taking my straw and putting it all the way down to the finished edge. I'm just gonna, just pushing it all the way to the finished edge until we stop. There you go. And then I'm going to feed it back through Okay, now this is a 25 inch long strap, so I don't think that's too bad of a time, right? Okay, so we are just finishing that end just because it's a pet peeve of mine. And again, just put all these back in here so you guys can see it. This is in the link in my bio. This little set is in the link in my bio under um, products I recommend so that you guys can find it super easy. If you wanna look at it. And this is what it looks like. It's got three sizes. I was using this really tiny skinny one here. I know you can't tell by the camera, but this is like the coffee straw thickness. Okay, so I have two spaghetti straps. They are 3 8 inch wide. And you would want to press them so they're nice and flat and pretty. And we are going to attach them to the top of our dress right here. Okay, right where the straps go. So to put on straps, you want to make sure that you stitch um, what we call stay stitching. Stay stitching is going to be when you attach something to make it act as one and you sew inside of the seam allowance. So I know this probably sounds like duh to some of you, but you want to sew inside the seam allowance so that when you flip it right side out and you um, attach your facings, if you sew inside the seam allowance, when you attach the facing, you don't have the stitch line show up on the outside of the garment, okay? Now I know, obviously, that sounds like common sense to some of you, but if you don't know or you're not told, you're not taught some of these things, 
it can be really hard to navigate when you flip it inside out and you have your strap stitched lower than where your facing is finished. So, I always want to make sure that you assume that you know nothing. Okay? So I have pinned my strap to the point, okay? Strap is facing down towards the fabric and I'm going to stitch, tack it down right here and I'm gonna tack it at a quarter of an inch so that it is inside the seam allowance. Super, super important. Make sure that that strap is stitched inside the seam allowance so that when you come back through with your facing, it's already out of the way and that seam line is not gonna show up. So right now we have sewn our front to our back. We have sewn our front to our back facing. We've made spaghetti straps. And right now we are attaching those spaghetti straps. Always back to the instructions. Spaghetti straps here. We're attaching the spaghetti straps to the front of the garment here, right at the point. Okay? And then we're going to talk about your configuration for your straps. On this pattern, you can either make it into a crisscross back or a straight. <coughs> Just gonna stitch my other thing here. Okay. So I have straps. It's hard for you guys to see. straps okay so this is the dress we do need to do some finishings on it I want to talk to you about the straps so you have the option okay you have the option to do either a straight strap straight strap or a cross strap in the back okay so I made the strap super super long you can even I mean technically you could probably tie it if you wanted to tie at the top but I made the straps really long so that you can measure out how long you need and then decide how long those straps need to be when you attach them to the back so these are your configuration options Okay, straight straps, or you can cross the straps to the um, opposite side. Does anybody have any questions about that? Okay, so options for the straps, across the back, or you can go straight. Okay, that's total preference. So we have sewn. Our straps and we are uh, front to back on our dress okay we've sewn the side seams all right so next we have the facing again we talked about the facing the facing finishes the garment usually around the neckline or the armholes. Now you're going to want to put your straps facing down the fabric. So that they're inside of the garment. And then you're just going to take your facing and you're going to lay the front down onto the front. So it's going to be right sides together. Okay, so that's what that looks like here. 
It's like a short piece on the long piece. So you're gonna lay your facing to your front and pin it, just stab myself. And you're gonna match up, okay? This is the side seam. You're gonna match up the side seam to the side seam. So you know that you're matching up nicely. Any other points? Now, so um, we haven't sewn the straps on yet. You should measure at this stage, measure the straps and figure out how long they need to be because I didn't put it on my body. I didn't do a very good job of that. So the strap is gonna be from here and I am gonna cross mine in the back, so to about here. Mine's like 22 inches. Another thing you could do <clears throat> is determine, which I think I might actually change the instructions. So I'm gonna do the crisscross back. So the straps are going to go across to the other side, okay? Cross to the other side. And I'm just gonna pin it at the approximate distance. And then when I come to sew it, I'm gonna skip over it so that I can pull it and adjust it, okay? So I'm just gonna pin that back strap to the across, because I'm doing crisscross. And I'm gonna come back and when I try it on, I can adjust the straps so that they're perfect. So I'll probably add that. You guys can either tack stitch them, um, you can baste them, which means that you um, sew it at a really long stitch length. You can baste them there, and then you can come back and adjust them. But if you skip over while you're sewing the facing, like skip completely over the strap, stop at the um, before the strap, and then continue after the strap, you can go back and you can adjust it when we try it on. So that would be a tip for me. So right now we're looking at sewing the facing to the dress. We're going along the neckline, along the neckline, across, underneath of the arms, and across the top of the back. Okay. We have sewn our dress front to our back. You can adjust the cowl neck if you want so that it's not so deep. And again, I'm gonna send out an updated not so deep cowl neckline so you guys can determine which one you like better. If you've already cut it out, I've already shown how to adjust for that. If you ever um, need to adjust any sort of cowl neckline, uh, we covered that. We just measured in and then adjusted the armhole. The world of alterations is such a huge money maker. But all sewing is, is problem solving. Okay, so I have pinned my facing. The facing is pinned all the way across. Okay, all the way across the facing, the facing is pinned. And I have my back straps through the hole, but they're pinned. So I'm going to skip over them while I'm sewing so I can go back and adjust them. And I'm going to sew this at a half of an inch, half an inch seam allowance. 
How's it going, everybody? Does anybody have any other questions here while I start sewing? I know it's hard to uh, just watch me sew. Maybe it's not, I don't know. So I'm just sewing along the top of the facing. And I'm gonna stop, skip over that back strap so that I can come back to it. the facing front to back and the, the facing to the front of the dress making sure that everything lines up make sure that those straps are where they're supposed to be when you come through When you go to pivot, if you come to a stop and you're pivoting, put your needle down, your presser foot up, and you're basically gonna spin your fabric along that needle. That way you don't lose your spot. And that is how you're gonna pivot while you're sewing. Because this is on the bias, you, don't wanna, you wanna make sure that you're not stretching the fabric while you're sewing it. Because the fabric is already at an angle. Just checking my strap here. Coming up to my second front strap. Again, I'm pivoting, so I'm rotating the fabric. Needle down, press your foot up, rotate the fabric on the needle. And you put your presser foot back down and you continue sewing. That is called pivoting. I'm coming up to my second back strap. So I'm going to do some back stitches. Back stitches again, if you didn't um, hear about back stitches. I back stitch at the beginning and end of every seam. Back stitching is when you do three steps forward, hold down your reverse button, three steps back, let go of your reverse button and continue on sewing. And then we're going to continue sewing the facing. Okay. <clears throat> so I have the facing sewn to the dress. Now, in this step, we're gonna talk about clipping. Clipping is when you have a curve, you've sewn on the curve and you come back to, so my armholes, um, if you're, you're sewing a facing, you're almost always gonna be clipping in the seam. Clipping is when you have Say this curve here, for example, when you go to um, turn it right side out, it's not gonna lay as nice as it could, okay? So all these puckers here, okay? So you're gonna go back and you're gonna clip. What I mean by clipping is you're going to clip up to, but don't cut your seam line and you're just gonna like make a slice, okay? The reason you wanna do this is because it allows the fabric to open up along the curve. So if I pull it straight now, it opens up because it needs that room. So anywhere you have a curve, you should clip. Then that way when you turn it right side out and press it, it's gonna lay that much nicer because you reduced the pull from the other side. Now, 
Another thing we need to talk about right now, we're gonna do next is understitching. Almost always when you have a facing along the armholes, along the neckline, collar, that kind of stuff, you're always going to clip and understitch. And it's basically going to make it, the garment so much happier. It's gonna lay nicer and it makes it more professional. Okay, so I'm just gonna get through the rest of clipping these armholes. And I'm just going like every half inch and just making a little clip up to, but not through the seam line. And this is really important. You might think that it's overkill, but it's really, really important, especially if you have um, something like a pocket facing with a curve, like a jeans pocket, that curve that is absolutely clipped on the inside. Because when you turn it right side out, it really, really needs, here's your dress, okay? That's what the dress looks like. It absolutely needs to be clipped. And then it obvious, and then it needs to be understitched, which is our next step. So we just did attach the facing to the dress along the top, the arm size, the front, and then back to the back. Okay, so we just did that seam there, and then we clipped it. <coughs> And now we're going to understitch it. And understitching is where you're gonna lay the dress, the dress is in one direction and the facing is in the other direction and then you're gonna stitch along the seam line at 1 8 of an inch and you're gonna just attach your seam allowance to the side of the facing, okay? And that's gonna give your seam a little bit extra structure. How's it going? Hi Valerie! It's going to give your seam extra structure and it's going to help it lay nice and it's not going to turn in on you. So if you've ever seen this kind of shirt and that seam here, this seam here is like, um, doesn't lay super nice, right? It doesn't have a nice crisp edge. Chances are it was not understitched. So you're going to pick which side you want to sew on. And then you're going to go all the way along the seam and you're going to push your seam allowance underneath. So this is your facing, this is your dress, and here's your seam allowance, okay? Your seam allowance, you're going to push your seam allowance to your facing and keep it in the direction of your facing all the way down and you're gonna understitch your garment. We're gonna sew about an eighth of an inch away from that seam line, the entire length of what we just sewed. Again, you might be thinking this is overkill, but it is absolutely necessary to making your garment look professionally finished. Coming up to my straps in the back. I'm gonna figure out the best way to word that. Okay, so I'm just sewing the seam allowance in the direction of the facing. One eighth of an inch all the way across the top seam that we just did. And again, I mentioned before, um, I'm gonna start posting, I think, tutorials with the pattern instead of relying just on the class playback because the class playback is very long. I don't know when the last time I sat through a two-hour YouTube video was. Probably never. 
You should not be stitching on the outside of your garment. You should be stitching on the inside at attached to the facing. Okay, so make sure that you're stitching all of your seam allowance towards your facing. We're stitching at an eighth of an inch. And this is gonna give it that nice crisp edge to that drape. It's one of those things where you question whether you should waste the time doing it and then you do it and you realize that it absolutely makes a difference. Okay, so I'm almost through. Almost through here. We have hit the one hour mark. If you haven't taken a drink lately, please do so. I usually like to make sure that I take a drink of water at the one hour mark every single time. Because it can be hard to talk for this long and not drink water. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions here? I'm trying to see. First garment I want to make with a woven. I normally sew with a knit. Hello, Hannah. How are you? How's it going? What about the strips? Will you be able to adjust them? So yes, so I talked about um, the straps. Um, I am going to probably update the pattern instructions as well to um, so that you can go back and adjust your straps. Um, you can always make them almost like bra straps with the adjustable um, adjustable thing there. You know what I'm talking about. Um, the adjustable clip, you can do that if you wanted to with these straps because they're long enough. Which is actually a thought there. You might actually get those out and do that and then do a little tutorial on how to make that happen because I think that that would be awesome. So I have basically just pinned my straps into my hole and then I skipped over sewing them so that when I go back, I can get them correct. But I think you've given me a great idea. I might actually go back and do the construction on how to do the bra strap, but I don't know if that's too advanced for Beginning, beginning, beginning pattern here. So here is, this is the dress, okay? Put it on the mannequin again and we'll talk about where we're at. So at this point, I have in the instructions to hem the facing edge. So on the bottom of the facing, Okay, you have, this is the facing. You have this raw edge at the bottom. You're gonna want to finish that edge either by turning and stitching or surging or pinking the edge. Any of those options is acceptable here. I do have in the instructions that the, um, to do Now this is a size six mannequin, so it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be exact. Okay, so this is what she looks like. All right, simple, simple dress. Simple dress, but Man, she's gonna kill it. <clears throat> okay, so this is my cowl neckline and we've got the spaghetti straps. 
okay? So we have finished the top edge of this with a facing. And then we're going to make sure that we hem or finish the edge. You can serge it, the, the inside of the facing here. Let me show you what that looks like. So this is the facing and it's flipped up and you just did the understitching all the way across. You're gonna wanna hem. You're gonna either do a double rolled hem, you're gonna turn it and stitch it, you're gonna pink it, you're gonna serge it, whatever you have in your possession right here, you're gonna hem the inside, okay? So the next thing we're gonna talk about is attaching the zipper, okay? So depending on what zipper you chose, actually really close, really close. So depending on what zipper you chose, I recommend for this type of dress because it's um, slinky and um, because it can also be an evening dress, you might want to do an invisible zipper. If you feel like an invisible zipper is out of your wheelhouse and you wanna do some um, tutorials on them. I do have tutorials on the invisible zipper. Um, the invisible zipper foot does help, but it's not necessary. So an invisible zipper means that the zipper teeth are not on the outside of the zipper, they're on the inside of the zipper. And then that way when you zip it up, if you've ever seen one of the zippers that zips up the back of an evening gown, you can't see the zipper teeth, okay? So it's really important, especially for evening wear, if you don't care if your zipper shows or not, you can do whatever kind of zipper you want. Okay. So different zippers that you have, the option of sewing. This is the invisible zipper. There are no teeth on the outside, right? So when you go to sew this, the instructions are actually come with the zipper, but when you go to sew it, you sew it and you roll the teeth over and you stitch right next to the teeth. Now you don't catch the teeth, but you stitch right next to them, okay? And so that's how you're gonna do down one side and then down the other side and make sure that your garment matches up in the back. Now if you do a regular zipper like this, I recommend that you baste down your center back, and basting is the longest stitch length. So on this machine, I would put the stitch length all the way up to four, and it makes the stitches longer, okay? So make your stitch length as long as possible, and you sew down where that zipper is, and then you press the seams open, press the seam allowance open, and then you lay your zipper straight down the back, and then you sew down one side across the bottom and then stitch up the other side, okay? And that's gonna give you almost like little flaps to cover the zipper in the back, okay? So that's, that's a really easy option. So that is a traditional zipper that looks like this with the teeth out in the front. So you would baste your seam first, lay your zipper down on the inside and then stitch down one side, stitch across, and then stitch up the other side, and then you're gonna seam rip that basting stitches down the center, and then when you open it up, you basically have little, like a flap on either side, and that's gonna help you get the adjustable slider. I agree, I think I need to do the adjustable sliders for this uh, pattern, because I think that it's gonna be really hot. Okay, so back to zippers, and then the other option is the exposed zipper. Okay, so if you're gonna do the exposed zipper, you would baste your seam as well, okay? And then you would lay your zipper facing up on the outside of the garment. And then again, we're gonna stitch down one side and across and then back up the other side and then take out the basting stitches. So the second two options are basically the same, only the traditional zipper, you sew on the inside of the garment and this one here on the outside of the garment, okay? Does anybody have any questions on zippers? 
Any questions on zippers? Always iron your zippers. Tip from the comments, always iron your zippers so they don't look like this. These ones just came out of the package. So this is what they look like out of the package. Top comment for class, iron your zippers. <clears throat> okay, so after you determine what you're gonna do for your zipper, and you put your zipper in, you're gonna wanna make sure, so this is here, we're putting in the zipper, and then at the bottom, you're gonna sew the rest of the the rest of the bottom of the shirt or the rest of the dress on the center back seam needs to be attached together. And then we're gonna talk about finishing the facing on the inside of the garment, okay? So you have this facing, it's an extra piece of fabric on the inside of the garment. How do you finish that up to the zipper? I'm gonna pin this one because it's a good color. So my zipper is in place and it is up to, the zipper tape is up to the so you guys can see it and show you exactly what I'm talking about. The reason that I don't sew the zippers during class is because I don't want to deter you by sewing an invisible zipper and you feel like you got the other kind of zipper or you feel like you don't want to sew an invisible zipper. So this is my facing, okay? And this is the top of the zipper because this is the back of the dress. So when I rotate my facing to the right side, right on the inside of the dress, it's gonna finish the top of that zipper. And on the inside, now if you want, because it's more of an evening dress, you want a hook and eye at the top of there, you need to leave a little bit of space at the top of the zipper. So this is the zipper stopper right here at the top. You wanna leave a little bit of space. So you wanna leave on your dress, you wanna um, position this a little bit farther down from that seam, okay? I'll show you what I mean. So this is the line, and this is the facing at the top, and this is where the top of the dress is. So if this is ironed, you're gonna to wanna to press the um, facing, for sure, please press it. This is the finished edge. This is the top of the dress. Leave a little space. Leave a little space for a hook and eye. So when you line up your zipper, bring your stopper down just a little bit so that you have space for that hook and eye. Okay, does that make sense? And then when you fold this down on the inside, So your zipper is gonna be sewn and your seam allowance is pressed backwards and then your facing is pressed backwards a little bit. When you fold it down on the zipper, you can either hand, I would recommend hand stitching. So I recommend hand stitching. So you come back and you hand tack your facing to the inside of your zipper but make sure that you leave a good quarter of an inch or a little bit more than an eighth so that that zipper has room to zip up. Can everybody see that? So when you come back through and you attach your facing to your zipper, you wanna make sure that when you stitch it, you leave that gap here, okay? And then you're gonna hand tack that down so the facing is finished on the inside of the zipper. Does anybody have any questions on this dress? The finishings I am going to go back and do. I'm gonna lay out the pattern instructions for making an adjustable bra strap in the back because fantastic idea, not by me. <laughs> I'm gonna add in 
some language on pressing here because I don't think I mentioned it, but oh, how important it is. Okay. And if you didn't get a chance to sew along with us today, give me until tomorrow and I will have up the um, tutorial for this dress. Okay. I'll probably sew it again in black. I also have copper fabric that I'm going to do. Okay, so we're going to lay this on the mannequin. And then the bottom, um, the bottom you should do like a double rolled hem. Um, that is in the instructions here. So for special occasion and evening wear, double rolled hem, you turn the fabric, stitch it at a quarter of an inch, trim it, press it, and then roll it again so that it's a really nice finished edge. And that's how I finish all of my special occasion and um, like wedding dresses, prom dresses, that kind of stuff. So super important, double rolled hem. If you have the foot and you're good at it, you can use it. But I have tried the double rolled hem foot and I can't ever seem to get it quite right or it drops the stitches and I don't have time to waste on that. So this is your dress. Again, I am going to work out the details on the adjustable straps because, yes, I'm so excited. Okay. So things to consider. Before you get started, how deep you want your V, okay, how deep you want your cowl neck, and also how long you want your dress. This dress here on me is going to be like a mid chin, which I think is really in right now, and I think that I want this dress to be there for me. If you want it to be, it can also be a shirt. Um, if you cut it around here, it could be a shirt, and if you cut it um, a little bit longer above the knee, it could be a cute summer dress. So you just have to decide how long you want your dress to be. And the best place to do your measurement for that is the underarm to where you want it to go, okay? So when you measure the underarm, and I'm recommending the underarm because if you start from here, how do you line that up on the pattern, right? But the underarm, you can measure on the pattern down the side and mark it. And then you square it across, or if you're gonna do a curve. Um, all of these patterns are kind of designed to be a learning experience, and also a, you have to figure out what you want it to be, okay? So it's, it's one thing to sew you know, a commercial pattern and um, do exactly what the steps say, and that's totally fine. And I, I totally love it. But I personally think that teaching you how to do it yourself and how to make those adjustments and how to do the problem solving teaches you way more. So I want you to think about things like how long you want the hem to be and where you should measure on the pattern and on the body to figure out how long you want that pattern to be, okay? So again, on this pattern, we're deciding how deep we want this cowl to be, right? And the way that you would adjust that, if you wanted it super deep, this gets wider. And if you want it less deep, this comes in and is more shallow, okay? And this pattern is drafted so that there are no darts here because that's kind of the style I was going for. But if you wanted darts on your body, you can pinch them and pin them, and then you could sew them, okay? You could sew darts if you wanted darts so that you could make it a very um, form-fitting dress, okay? So there are options here with hacking the patterns, and you definitely wanna make sure that you think about what you want your end result to look like. This is like the beginning steps of designing your own patterns. So. On the patterns right now, I have this um, construction notes page. So I want you to think about where you want your hem to be and mark it, how deep you want your V to be, if you want to 
you know, cut it right here and have a different fabric down here, or you wanna do a ruffle at the bottom, that kind of stuff. This is your page to take and say, here's how I'm gonna design my dress, and then make your notes and decide all of these things and take your notes down, and then when you go and you buy your fabric and stuff, you have a full plan of what you want your design to look like. Does anybody have any questions? Anybody have any questions on this pattern? I am going to update it and I'm gonna send it back out. Anybody have any questions? This is Cordelia. And she is my cowl neck dress or shirt option. Anybody have any questions? Don't forget to hit the like button on your way out. I'm gonna end class here. We've got some family coming and we gotta go clean. I'm gonna pin, I'm gonna do some um, extra things this week. Hey Valerie, before you leave, I tried to send you um, a message a few weeks ago. If you could email me, Jacqueline at JacquelineTerry.com, email me your um, email address so that I have it, okay? because I want to work with you on how to adjust patterns. Um, we're going to do a lot more pattern adjustment this week and talk about how to make the patterns what you need them to be, okay? For anybody who wants to learn pattern design, is interested in um, creating their own um, business or product or anything like that, we're going to start talking about that kind of stuff. We're going to be talking about what you guys need, okay? Um, Jean, make sure that you also let me know we're gonna be talking, I'm gonna talk a lot more about the business side and um, talk about you guys' goals this year because my goals are not important. My goals are to help you guys and I think that maybe it's time we focus a little bit more on that so that we can get some um, goals for all of my entrepreneurs out there who want to sew and want to learn how to create and want to learn how to work with a pattern and make it their own. Um, and then eventually we'll get into drafting the patterns from scratch. So today we sewed the cowl neck dress. Cordelia is what I named her. If you haven't noticed, I'm going for old lady names. Um, and I am going to be talking about um, working on adjusting patterns and hacking patterns this week real heavily and working on what you guys want to learn. So if there's anything you guys want, if there's anything you guys want to learn, um, send me an email, Jacqueline at JacquelineTerry.com. Okay, I'm going to hop off. And as always, thank you guys so much. I really enjoy having you guys here every Saturday. I love you guys. And thank you very, very much. Facebook and YouTube. I'm going to be posting a lot more this week.